Hi guys! Um, welcome to Ahabis, our daily 30-minute briefings on bleeding edge in fashion practices that all together form the emerging shape of our new normal. Every day, we round up actionable best practices from business leaders, which all of you can apply to your own businesses. To level up the way you take care of people, your customers, and your partners, as demanded by this business and usual times. My name is Sarah, and I'll be facilitating today's open discussion together with uh, Mina. Please say hi. Hi. Um, Kimmy. Hi. And Dandy. Hello. So, yes, you heard it right. This is an open conversation, so please feel free to share your thoughts and opinions about our featured stories for today. So, you can type in your thoughts in the chat box there, uh, here at the Google Meets, so we can acknowledge you. Just a reminder, though, uh, to ensure the, the quality of our audio, let's turn off our microphones for now, unless we call on you to speak up, okay? So, uh, and a bit of a disclaimer, uh, some of the business leaders we interview uh, speak based from their own personal experiences on the ground. We will have to preserve their company's anonymity. But don't worry, because at the end of the day, what really matters are the learnings that we will get from them. So we also have our resident bulldog, Andre. So uh, can you explain a little bit what you're going to do, Andre? Uh, thank you, Sarah. It's good to see you again. Uh, yes. Can you guys hear me all right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Well, um, I'm always ex uh, asked to explain uh, what my bulldog role is, and I always say that uh, you will see it soon enough, and it'll be obvious. So <laughs> let's just get on the. Let's get on it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's let's start this discussion. Let's get the ball rolling. So let's start with uh, Mina. Uh, Mina, can you share us about uh, your insights for today? And uh, wait. Um, sorry, Karen will be our timekeeper. Karen, are you ready? Yeah, she said she's going to do manual timekeeping. Okay, okay. So, sorry, let's go back to Mina. So, Mina, your uh, your floor starts now. Okay. So, my AHA hero is one of the pioneers of the IPBPO industry with 20 years of experience in managing different companies. So, um, this is Gandaya. So, um, in light of the, cur the current context here is in light of the current state of the BPO industry, a lot of these companies are trying to cope up with the lockdown in different ways in order to minimize the economic impact and also become part of the solution once the economy restarts. So, one of the aha, the first aha that he shared with me is that you have to iterate your business continuity plan or disaster recovery plans based on the crisis ahead. So he shared how a call center company with 6,000 employees was able to transition their employees to the work from home setup in just five days. How are they able to do this? So what they did is they brought out their existing BCP and then they use all the applicable ones that they already have in place. And then all the other stuff that um, they still need, they just figure it out while they are doing it. This is through the help, of course, of their IT and HR fronts, like what needs to be done. And, and through this, they were able to do it seamlessly. Um, in the future, um, what they are going to do is that they are going to check what worked well and then what didn't work and then what are the things that they thought will work and then didn't work so that in the future they will have a better grasp on how are they going to do this more efficiently. My aha number two is that clients have collaborators. Uh, most uh, contact centers, they have very strict security measures because they're dealing with uh, sensitive data from their clients. But because of the situation, um, they really have nothing to do but to compromise so that the business will still continue. So what they did is that they um, had an agreement or a compromise with their um, clients uh, so that they will be able to bring out all the stuff to the, uh, to the employee home and then work from there. So through this, they were they were able to tell their clients that um, you have they will still be able to.
protect the data while still providing the same quality of service. For this, um, we have noticed that just if you would be able to tell your customer what should be done from your end and what you will need from their end, then this will really work. It's going to be a partnership through and through. My third aha is um, something that is what we have mentioned before, which is upskilling that, that employee. This time, this is all about tech content. So the um, tech content is upskilling them in terms of their tech skills. So um, right now, what they're doing is to advance the skills of all the employees in terms of voice, chat, text, and email support so that they are well-rounded and they can go from one department to another if needed. Additionally, they also offer expanded um, canned training modules and they have also partnered with um, online learning institutions from Harvard and other similar institutions. And um, the employees can take Java programming, project management courses, and other courses for customer service that are free of charge because these are courtesy of the company so that um, when they go back, they can also get these certifications from their training that they can add to their many list of capabilities to their CVs. So that's it. All right. Thank you, Mina. I will uh, withhold judgment until I hear from your three colleagues. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you. So next, aha. Yes. Okay, so uh, that's uh, that's everything from Nina. So let's call on uh, Chini to share her um, insights for today. Okay, hi. So my AHA hero for today is Joshua Aragon. So he's the founder of Zagata. He's an on, it's an online platform that sells fresh fruits and vegetables direct from farmers to restaurants. So um, mm -hmm. they're aim is always to let the lives of Filipino farmers and give consumers in Manila access to safe, healthy, and fresh produce from farm to kitchen. So now, um, they're one of the few companies that have good problems right now because um, Zagana's orders flew up to thousands daily since the lockdown because everybody nowadays wants fresh fruits and vegetables. So the problem now was that they're undermanned and lack the system to fulfill huge volume of orders. So what do they do with this opportunity? So um, aha number one is that they expanded their reach to where the customers are. So when they started, as I mentioned, their customers were mainly restaurants. So since these restaurants closed down, they shifted to selling directly to households. So um, this is something that I guess big companies can learn from. If you're stuck in a situation when you can't reach your typical customers, go to where the need is. So my aha number two is um, they also gave opportunities to others. So since right now their weak point is manpower because um, right now they're having the skeletal workforce uh, go to work. So they partnered now with Barangay for additional manpower to fulfill the orders every day. So as a result, they provided opportunities to people who are idle while helping their own business at the same time. Okay, so for my aha number three, um, I, I would like to call this collaborating in a time of corona because um, since Zagana has its own facility, um, several e-commerce platforms like um, Lazmart, Shopee, GrabMart, they all approach them. So they're using Zagana's facilities, which is why they're all cramped up in one space. So right now, they're working to stabilize their operations. Um, to meet the demand, they admitted they needed to be agile in setting up the systems and processes necessary. But it was also clear to them that they couldn't do it alone. So while they're stabilizing their systems internally, they're partnering with Pushcart PH. So that's an online grocery delivery service to be able to accommodate their orders. That's it. Well done. Thank you. Who's next? Okay. Uh, so let's call on uh, Dandy to share her insights for today. Yes. Okay. So I am going next because this is somehow similar in terms of business to what um Chini just mentioned. So my aha hero, her name is Chris Casantos. She and her husband are the owners of Eggs for Breakfast Restaurant. Um, 
they started Eggs for Breakfast in 2014. And currently, we have two branches. One in Antipolo, one in Maritina. Um, they're in the top 10 list of best restaurants in Antipolo. But for sadly, they have to shut down their operations, their restaurants um, during the lockdown. So, the, of course, the problem the problem is um, they don't have customers. Aside from that, they have a lot of stocks left when they close down. So how can they at least break even and minimize the wastage by just throwing out their stocks of produce? So aha number one, of course, is pivot. How can they still serve their customers given the resources that they have? When the lockdown started, they had a surplus of eggs uh, because eggs for breakfast. So they started selling off those. And after they have sold off their stocks and perishables, eventually to maintain their relationship with their suppliers and of course earn some money at the same time, they decided to do full on online grocery via FB, which they are tentatively calling crisis market. Um, now, aside from eggs, we're off selling vegetables, vegetables, daily staples, even alcohols and sanitizers. Um, Prisca says they are considering crisis market to be an ongoing business for them even after the lockdown because she sees a great demand for it as she experienced firsthand from her patrons. Which brings me to my aha number two. Listen to your customers. Since the lockdown, their customers and patrons have been reaching out to Prisca and asking what else they can offer, how far they can deliver. This is the reason why she started Crisis Market. Aside from the customer reaching out to her, she proactively crowdsourced feedback from over Facebook, asking her friends, customers, whether an online grocery business would be something that they would need and support. And when she got critical mass of positive feedback, she then decided to do Crisis Market in full blast. Now she even started doing Pasabay services, wherein people can request for stuff outside of what they're offering, like fruits and vegetables and produce. And she can just um, ask them for an additional charge for purchasing those. So this coincides with an article from entrepreneur.com titled How Your Small Businesses Can Survive the COVID-19 Pandemic, wherein they pose a question to entrepreneurs. How will your customers behave moving forward? What will and won't matter to them? And how can you accommodate your new type of customers? So it really it all boils down to continuing to engage and listening to customers. In the spirit of big corporates learning something from small business that is like progress, I think um, this is a golden opportunity for them, now that they've stopped operations, to still continue listening, reaching out to their customers to really know how else they can serve them during this time of Corona. Thank you. Okay, so this prompts uh, this prompts for my turn now. So uh, my uh, hero for today is um, ABS-CBN Entertainment. So um, uh, I interviewed some of the producers producers I worked with while I was when I was working there. So um, the the context is that since the lockdown was implemented, they are they are not allowed to digitally tape episodes uh, in their studios. So because of social distancing measures and those stuff. So um, the, so which brings me to my first AHA. The first AHA that they did was to broadcast um, Zoom meetings, uh, well, such as this one that we're doing right now uh, on free TV. So it may look weird at first that you're seeing like a, a web conference uh, interface uh, on your free TV, but it works because uh, the, 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 they're still... Uh, delivering the the happiness uh, the content that they used to deliver even uh, when they were still filming uh in their physical studios uh, and then um uh the, my aha number two here is that uh, uh despite that uh, despite the, the situation um they're they're um forming content uh, that they, they're tailor fitting all the content that they're um airing now to the current situation so that it will be relevant and relatable and of course sensitive to what the masses are um uh experiencing right now so um let uh so for in case uh showtime it's a daily la noon time show of abs cbn so they actually started this uh this thing of uh airing zoom uh teleconferencing um and free tv so they still do their normal uh, banters and um, opening song, but the segments that they, they do now uh, features um, 
uh, normal good Samaritans who, who display acts of kindness during this situation, like there's this uh, taho vendor who donated his uh, taho supplies to, to frontliners so that um so that can, uh, and at the same time there's this another segment that that's about um Vice Ganda's a new song which is about corona and which which has the aim of empowering the people to be uh to be uh to look at the positive side even if uh, there's still uh, the, 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 the the negative things around so being being true to their um uh, to their value of uh, giving happiness to people despite what happens these there's still stages to do that with these uh, measures so at the same time um the audience can also see uh the these uh, artists uh, live at home so it's also like a bonus for the audience and we know that the primary audience of uh, of these uh, shows are the masses so it's a uh, it's really uh, it's really satisfying for them to know mundane things about this uh, this public figures that they see in the TV. So yeah, so that's it. That, that closes my uh, my discussion. So, uh, Andrew, would you like to ask some stuff about the, our presentations? Sige, let's. Uh, well, thank you to uh, thank you to Mina, Chini, Dandy, and Sarah for our ahas. Let's give this a Monday morning twist, uh, shall we? I mean, let's not forget it's a Monday morning. Uh, so how about a little twist? And um, we can turn it around on you and ask you, what is your favorite AHA amongst the four of you? Uh, if we can uh, do some live uh, banter right now amongst the four of you, uh, what would be out of the uh, four cases that you guys uh, uh, shared with us today? Uh, which one would be the aha that uh, you would uh, walk out with and choose as your favorite for today? Well, if it, for me, my favorite would be um, Dandy's uh, Dandy's um, aha, which is about yeah. the eggs, the eggs, because it's just so ingenious that they're going, they 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 are selling the eggs that they they are using, and also. Uh, with the the name of their company, which is Eggs for Breakfast, I, I think it's just the gen genius that okay, people will will have higher um uh remember higher chance of remembering this uh, this company because they're selling eggs and at the same time, eggs is also in the name of their company. So, yeah. okay. How about the rest of you? I, I want to point out um one of Mina's ahas ahas particularly one about um, having your customers or clients as your allies during this time. Um, why? Because one of, I remember one of my stories that I featured um, a few days ago, um, in their BPO company, they cannot totally implement 100% work from home. Why? They have to maintain privacy um, for the clients. So this was something refreshing for me. I didn't realize that you can actually do that. That you can actually forge this agreement with your client. And actually, if you will just communicate with them and let them know what's going on, stuff like that, you can really um, um, come to a middle ground. You don't have to force your people to, to still go out when you can do a compromise with your client and really re just reassure them of their privacy. And it actually is possible. So that is, I think, something that we can all think about considering our clients' customers as actually our allies and being mutually beneficial to both parties. Agreed? Um, I okay. Think, I think I, uh, the thing that I like about Sarah's um, AHA Hero is the fact that they're delivering value as usual in a time of Corona. So they're using the platform, uh, they're using um, the non-typical platform that you would usually um, see on live TV, but they're still able to deliver positive messaging, um, positive messaging, entertainment, all of the things that um, that the masses nowadays would probably miss because of Corona. But they're still finding ways to deliver that value, and at the same time, they're using uh, they're using media now. To be able to amplify positive messaging and just then, um, letting letting the masses know that they're still 
here, they're still delivering the same kind of quality um, entertainment messaging to the masses. So to me, that's that's actually a big win for ABS right now. Thank you, Chini. Last but not least. What does Mina have to say? Mina, we can't hear you. Okay. Your mic is off. I am, I'm sorry. Okay, so I think I like Dandies because of the pivot that the company did. Um, I, I'm i a big fan of companies. Like, um, I've been doing this for, I think, about a week now. And there is something about companies who are able to turn this shit around and then make it work for them. And I think that's really something that is really commendable especially uh, and also i've seen this in other companies as well um similarly um there is people are really craving for some duke cell right now and one of the um some duke cell stores near my house has reopened in order to give um value to their customers and to their employees as well. Like they really open so that we could deliver na lang some gift to people who are really missing it. Because I've seen a lot of people on social media, uh, I want some gift. So this is something that they also listen to the customers eh, that okay, so people want this. So why don't we reopen and then turn so that's it. All right. So, I mean, uh, we're hearing uh, similar themes, uh, different stories, different um, parts of the business, but it's the same thing as uh, we've been uh, discovering in the past week of doing this, which is value unusual, right? You can't do business as usual, but we can still uh, stay true to our uh, knitting, so to speak, in looking around at what our capabilities are that remain robust and, and offerable to the market and just looking for other ways to deliver it, you know, whether it's uh, it's uh, uh, the crisis market of uh, eggs for breakfast or the uh, video um, uh, conferencing mechanisms of a major broadcast studio, etc., uh, etc. Et We've seen time and again in each of the sharings from our four uh, journalists here that there are so many ways to uh, to still be of service uh, and still be relevant in the market by by offering uh, business unusual so since you guys came up with your own winners why don't you came come up with your own scores what what shall what score do we deserve uh, today oh out of five <laughs> It's a Monday twist, right? So, yeah. Mina, let's start with you. Yeah. What would you score your own? Uh... Four out of five. <laughs> okay, four out of five. I think it's five, though. Chini? Four or five. Four out of five. Dandy? I would say five, only because um, of the resilience. It's something that really a lot of businesses can learn from. Very good. I like the attitude. Let's give you your five. Uh, Sarah. Uh, me, I think, uh, I think uh, I'm think i going to give myself a four. Okay. Okay. Four. Yes. Well, very good. That has been uh, another learning experience for all of us. Again, we're doing this in order to um, take ourselves up the learning curve. Uh, what is this new normal about? What are its uh, emerging best practices uh, as learned from the field? Uh, so we thank our four ladies again for taking us through this uh, tour de force of AHAS. It is uh, Monday and we look forward to uh, seeing you again tomorrow, Tuesday. Thank you, guys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you, everybody, for watching today's episode of AHA Biz. Uh, tune in again tomorrow, same time, 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Uh, for your daily dose of um, leading edge insights and practices that shape our business unusual in this new normal. Uh, and by the way, we also have other upcoming webcasts, the dates for which you can see on our screen. Again, thank you, and this has been thank AHA you. Biz. Bye. 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 See you guys. Thank you.